A big hello and a warm welcome to all of you amazing people out there to the channel Twin Flame Union. In this channeling, I would be talking about a message that has been shared with me about societal programming and abuse in the childhood and what is the connection in the Twin Flame journey and how by healing these wounds you can reach to the union faster than fast. My friends, the sequence of the channeling is very important. In yesterday's channeling or the channeling that was given to me on 31st March 2020, we got to know that the divine masculine loses the mother figure, the, the matriarchy and he approaches the divine feminine who has also had also lost the mother figure and the father figure also in her own ways. All of us go through that and from her journey by healing all the abuses she reached a point of detachment. So he approaches her. That is the only reason he approaches her. It is not about building an ego or a superiority complex about it. It is not also about saying that the parents or the ancestors or anyone in the society should be blamed and there has to be created a negative approach towards them that, oh my God, these are the people, these are the reasons. Because you have to understand that we are all victims of victims. No one wants to do anything bad to another person. Even the hard, hardest criminals, hardest criminals who have no control over their emotions, they are also a result of childhood abuse or ancestral curses. They cannot heal it because they don't have that much consciousness or they do not have done those type of karmas to be able to heal it. They could also be paying for past sins. They could also be living through curses of others and their own selves. It's only when you go deeper and deeper into the realities of human beings and human lives. It's only when you understand there are so many various dimensions. You also get to know that death is not something to be mourned for. Life is not something to be happy about. These are the sides of the same, two sides of the same coin, life and death. They mean the same thing. In order to reach to a point of peace, we all have to die. And don't think that we don't die every day. We die every day. Literally, when we go to sleep, we die. There is not much of a difference in a dead person and a person who is in deep sleep. The only thing is that he still has some breaths left that the dead person does not have. We are all going headed to the same thing. And the way we breathe in and the way we breathe out, that is also a format of life and death. Every minute we breathe in, every minute, we, every moment in fact we breathe out. It's happening all the time. We live and we die. 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 It is always happening everywhere around us. So we should never cry for a person who's left. And let me tell you, it's not that I have learned it in one day. I have also cried a lot. I have also wept a lot for people who went away from me due to life and death. And I know I made that mistake and I have apologized for that. And I have also worked on that. And I understand that when I understood that these people have not really died, the soul never dies, I actually found them to be closer to me than they were in the physical bodies. My relationship with them has got more strengthened and I would like to thank the universe for it. I would like to thank my gurus for it. I would like to thank my masters for it. And I would like to thank the source for it, the grace of the source for it. To even give me this and the ability to talk about it and the ability to share it with you all, the ability to channel these messages. These are really powerful divine messages which I've been receiving. And it's, it's been, uh, I've been doing this for a long time, but I've done it in a different format. First, I wrote a book 
and that book was so heavy duty that the book itself was so powerful so powerful that it literally took me through all the chapters to all the paths through all the emotions in real life <clears throat> when we channel messages initially first we channel the messages and the person who channels the messages has to go through the same emotions maybe the situations are different the setups are different you know like the props are different the theater is different but the act behind it or the story behind it like not even the story even the story can be different the narrative is the same the narrative and the emotions behind it but you can play it out in different ways and all of us are playing it out in different ways nobody is superior nobody is inferior everyone is the same so the problem lies in the childhood it is the abuse that we face in the childhood that can create all of this that happens around us it is in the childhood that the society tells us that there is a separation they tell us to believe that the illusion of separation is real and this is definitely the greatest illusion of this planet earth life they tell us that we are all different you know pieces different pieces we are not the same we are not whole we are not complete we need to find something we need to do something we need to go out of our way we need to figure it all out somehow to find that completion and we keep looking for this completion in jobs and in other people in relationships in family it is not that other people are bad to us or other people don't understand us or other people are flawed we are equally flawed so when we look for flaws in our mothers and our fathers and our best friends and our lovers and our pets or in our society also even that is a part of us that is a reflection of us that flaw is within us it is not easy to actually reach to this conclusion and it's more difficult to actually work it out but whenever you work it out you will see that all of this game all of this illusion all of this matrix is actually here to help us out it's going to help us out for sure the problem is that we are taught from the day we are born that it's not going to be easy it's never going to be easy anything that we wish or we desire it will be difficult we are not letting it be easy we are not allowing it that freedom to be easy and we talk about things like time we talk about things like oh my god it's been 10 years i am in this journey in this twin flame journey it's been 11 years what the hell what is this all about i've still not received my union i've still not received my perks i've still not received any benefit i've been slogging my ass off i've been doing this i've been going here i've been blah 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 we don't understand that every single day comes with some or the other adventure and if you're still blind towards that adventure towards that you know that newness that life brings every day then it's going to be very difficult the union is going to be even more far i don't want people to delay their unions stop looking for unions outside this is what the childhood abuse teaches us that we are separate and things are difficult and we are unworthy and it's never going to happen but i'm also telling you that it's just an illusion you have to find your way back home and yesterday i heard something very interesting it said that home and om are rhyming words when we say om and when we say home it sounds like the same thing and home is where the heart is when i was in pokhara i was living a hippie life for some time and this happened before my father got cancer and for over a month i was meditating in the mountains and it was a uh, it was a unique experience i had done it before but this time i was in a place where i really wanted to be for a long time and again i had not planned it it was it was all there in the clouds and i remember i didn't even have so much money but something in me i was not in good health and 
I had just come out of a false twin relationship. It was a very toxic relationship. And the only saving grace during that relationship was the spiritual practice, was the love of my gurus and the grace of God. It somehow gave me some strange form of energy to always get up and always be like, okay, it is done. I want to get out of it. A false twin, a twin relationship looks very similar to a twin relationship. Let me tell you, the on and off pattern, the runner chaser dynamic is quite similar. So it can fool you. And I know it can fool you so hard, so bad that you're not going to be getting out of it for a long time. Even after you're alone, you will keep thinking that, okay, it could be real. It will keep, keep giving you that illusion that did I did? What did I do? Did I do something wrong? Because the the act, the actions are, the actors involved are good actors, basically. So when I was living over there, free, all by myself, doing what I wanted to do, no problem of money, the universe was giving everything to me on a platter. Obviously, because they wanted to prepare me for a, like a much worse thing, you know, which was on my way. And... Even though I could say that, uh, why, why would you do that? Why, why would you send me away? But looking back, I understand that I had no energy left in me to cope up with this problem that was coming ahead. I had lost so much weight. I had no power left, nothing. So I relate with you all when, when I read about people who are actually genuinely doing this journey. Now, let me tell you, there are some genuine cases and there are some non-genuine cases. The non-genuine cases are so enamored and so attracted by this whole romance. If you are one of those people who are enamored by the romantic things, by the whole Mills and Boons thing, then you should not be even here listening to this channeling. You will not be able to complete this mission work ever. You have to be so selfless, so desireless. You have to be like, okay, I'm after this person because this person made me feel that there is true love. True love was my only reason. Even in the false twin relationship, you are obviously the innocent person who's been played upon. That's why the universe helps you out. Don't think the universe is going to help out someone who is very smart, over smart. The universe is so smart, so smart, so smart. The maths and the science and the, the everything is like in place. There is no way you can fool anybody. If you're fooling someone, then that's your own self. So when I was there, I was sitting with a group of people like my brothers and sisters, some of them literally. And we were on the same thing. We were all on a spiritual journey. Some were traveling because they wanted peace. Some were just there for a course, a silent retreat. And we were living there all by ourselves. And like I said, I did not have any problem of anything. Financially, I was so sorted at that time. And I put on my weight. I was looking nice. My hair was very healthy. Everything was because of all the meditation work and all the releasing, all the karma, all the debts. So much had released back then. I have even shared some of the uh, vlogs from that time. And it's not that I did it only then. I did it again later on also. I went away for eight months in 2018. I went away for uh, four or five months in 2016. So I've been doing this. I keep going away for, especially for this work because it's not like I'm planning it out. It's always planned by something invisible. That is, that is the beauty. That is the, that is how the mystical realm works. You don't, you don't even know like five days before you're leaving that you're going to be leaving for some place. You weren't going to be packing your bags. Your ticket would be booked. You would be having money in your account. You would be, everything is just done. And when you're not supposed to go anywhere, you can try, like you can do whatever the hell you want to do. It will not happen. It will simply not happen because it's not the time. And that is why surrendering is so important. It's not like you're going to learn surrendering. You will learn it through the, obviously, on your own. It's difficult to learn because you have to give it a hard fight in order to learn it fully. So I've learned my way and I will tell you guys the best way to learn Anything is honesty and following your heart. If you follow your heart, it will never, never, never take you in a wrong place. And the heart is connected to the soul. 
so i was sitting there with this be- bunch of group of people and we were just playing like a game and one by one we had to tell uh, each other that the group the whole group that which is the uh, you know place in the in the world map in the globe where we would like to have our home so somebody said bali somebody said spain somebody said this somebody said that and finally my turn came and uh, i was just sitting there and thinking about this whole thing a uh, few days back i had also realized that one thing which out of experience that um, you don't find yourself in a place you don't find yourself in people you don't like a person specific person and you don't find your self in a situation so people place and situation will can never make you happy that happiness you have to find it in yourself and that i'd learned from experience so i can add this in this channeling uh i i'm just doing it it's just spontaneously i'm adding it to this channeling message this channeled message that at that point in time when this question was asked to me i very spontaneously said that i don't care where i live but i want no matter where i am i want that place to be my home it should feel like home wherever i am even if i'm sitting on a rock it should be my home i should belong there and when i heard my own self and i was like okay that was profound that was profound but it was the universe's way of again it was a channeled message which just popped out of my mouth because i was thinking of another answer by the way and it did put me on that path eventually like day by day minute by minute anything that you received as a channel message it means that you are there you will you will get there that is the power of channel messages so here i am to tell you all that heal your childhood wounds you are the one who knows them better you are the one who knows them best heal them find them locate them do it yourself or take someone's help but this is the way this is the thing these are the things you're supposed to do because these childhood blocks they are, that's why they're called blocks they are the ones that are blocking you from being in the union from being in the constant state of love with the source constant unity with the source constant harmony with the stroke source energy constantly always always even if you somehow miss out and you just you know find your like you know situations happen something very uh, difficult comes your way like something which has a like very old karmic baggage or something comes your way and you feel like you've lost the path in hindi there's a very beautiful word called sthit pragya pragya is another word so this is a combination of sthit pragya pragya means wisdom in simple words it's insight it's intelligence and sthit means to be stable so when you are a sthit pragya and the practice of being stable on wisdom the right wisdom on the path is in hindi is called sthit pragya the qualities of a sthit pragya is that sthit pragyas will not you know move away will not get distracted that easily even if there is a distraction they can come back to it they will tell themselves or they'll find a way to come back to the moment to the present moment to the wisdom to the actual wisdom of being in the present moment so in order to do that you need to cre- remove all the blocks and these abuses and the blame game is the biggest block that my mother did not do this for me my father did not do this to me my family is so mean to me they don't understand me you are having fights and quarrels and you are moving out you are leaving them alone or you they want you to get the hell out of there or whatever i mean it's a reflection of you and them it's all one thing it's all combination and even if you go out somewhere or even if they go away from you in any case they will still face it and you will still face it because it's a lesson the lesson is not going to leave you till the time you don't make peace with it and you're not able to make peace with it because there are some blocks there are these the blocks act like affirmations just the way we have positive affirmations we have negative affirmations which play out like an audio video in our minds so whenever we are planning to do something great whenever there is greatness there will be a block as well there can be 
So you have to remove those affirmations. You have to find those affirmations. Okay, at this point in time, at this moment, when I got very angry, when I got really sad, when I got very depressed, this was the dialogue in my head. This dialogue was running in my head. I need to find an opposite of this dialogue. Or I just need to remove the need of this dialogue. Why do I even need this dialogue? So, with this we come to the end of this channeling. Thank you so much for being here with me. And uh, keep removing the blocks and keep healing your childhood. If you don't heal it, heal the childhood, it will come to you in adult life or in adolescence or in old age or at the time of death and then in the next life and then in the next life. It's going to be like a loop. You don't want to be stuck in a loop. Thank you so much.